Hello there, it's me again. I've done another thing. So I coded a like very, very rudimentary system or like very, very basic system, like a mock-up basically of a proof of work blockchain. Now I'm trying to convert it into a proof of stake blockchain. Problem is, that is a lot more complicated than I expected it to be. We'll hop over to the computer in a minute, but just to give you a quick idea, this is this is it coded in JavaScript. Um, so you have the main blockchain class that handles the actual blockchain uh, blocks and transactions. Then you have key generator that just generates like wallets or keys for wallets. And because this is a very basic and like mock-up system, I basically need to manually code each transaction that's happening to test if it works or not. I also made this quick note here on an index card that kind of explains what I want to do with this proof of stake system or how I think I should be coding this. So you basically, you, you have your public key and then you can stake coins which are locked away in like a staked account. Um, and then when you do that, when you mine when, or when you forge a block, the network rewards you to your staked account. And with a public address, with your public address, anyone can see how many coins you have staked. Now to get to get your staked account uh, or get the currency in your staked account, you need to use your private address. So I need to figure out how to link uh, your public because the private address already unlocks the public address, but I needed to also unlock the staked account, which has a different key to the public account. All right, let's go through the code. So the first thing I did is that I created a blockchain that runs on proof of work. Just, I, I followed a tutorial to do that because I don't know uh, JavaScript or I didn't know JavaScript. I know a, a bit of it, started to learn some of it. So I followed a tutorial to build a basic proof of work blockchain and then I expanded upon it just a little bit. And now I'm trying to implement proof of stake. So I'm recording this now and I'm going to publish this video uh, now, just as kind of like a benchmark so I can see where I was uh, a, while ago, a while ago when I look back at this. So let's go through this uh, one thing at a time. We have a class here called blockchain. It has a constructor so we can create, we can create more than one blockchain if we want using this. There's the actual chain, which is a list of all the blocks in it. There's the difficulty, uh, which I will explain in a bit. There's pen and pending transactions, pending transactions, and there's the mining reward. So for a block to be added to the blockchain, first there needs to be a few transactions that have been called. So a few people need to actually, uh, a few people need to actually do a few transactions uh, for it to be worth it to mine a block. When transactions happen, they're added to something called the mempool, which is basically just a waiting area until a miner decides to mine a block. So once a miner does decide, then we call the mine block function with, with the difficulty. So the difficulty is how hard it's going to be to actually mine this block. So each block has a hash that the miner needs to figure out. In this instance, uh, in this instance, the difficulty is how many zeros need to be in front of the hash for it to work. So for this blockchain, I have it set to three, where there needs to be three zeros in front of the actual hash for, for that hash to work. So the miner will basically just keep guessing one, uh, one ounce after the other. The ounce is like a basic number that's just added so that it can keep guessing. So it guesses a random number for the nounce and then it just does that over and over and over until it eventually finds a hash that has three zeros in front of it. The nounce just goes up one every single guess. Once a miner finds that hash, then it adds the block to the blockchain. As we can see right here, this dot chain dot push, the current block that we're mining. And then it adds the mining reward as a new pending transaction. So the next miner, the next block to be mined, this miner will receive that reward when that happens. So that's the main thing. I just want to quickly go over the block here as well because it quickly explains the how it calculates the hash. So it takes in the information of the timestamps, so when the block is created, the nounce, the previous hash, 
and then a list of all the transactions, and it turns that into a hash. The reason this is important that is that each block also keeps track of the previous hash. So it also takes that previous hash to calculate its own hash. So if the previous hash is changed, then it breaks everything in the blockchain. Because if you recalculate the hash for this one, it doesn't have the, have the same previous hash and it doesn't work anymore. So now when we go to the main.js, this is actually uh, where I'm running this blockchain manually because it's still a very bare bones and basic version of a blockchain. So I need to manually code in I need to manually code in when a miner mines a block, when transactions happen, who's giving money to who, and so on. So in this version here, I start by creating five different wallets, and then mine five blocks, and give the rewards to the five different miners, just so then each miner has, each address has a starting amount of money which is 1,000. So then I can run these transactions that trade between them, and then it gives me the balance of the first two. So if I open up a new term terminal, so now when I run the main.js, we can see it mines the different blocks, and it's mining really quickly because we only need to find three, three zeros. I'm fairly certain Bitcoin now, the miners need to find hashes that have 19 zeros in a row, so a lot more, but now we see the balance of the two different addresses and then the miner mines two more and yeah, we just have the, the different account balances. So yeah, the next step now is to try and implement a, a proof of stake system, but that's a bit more complicated than I thought it was. So here's the design I came up with. I'm sure this is not the most optimized design and I'm sure a lot of people came up with much better designs, but basically the main thing is that we need a public address that goes to other addresses. This is confirmed by the private key. Now we also need this public address to have a staking address, and we need the private key to confirm when it stakes coins. Now what becomes complicated is when we try to receive those coins back to the public address, because that needs to be confirmed by the same private key. The reason it needs to be con confirmed by the same private key is that it is the same person. We're sending one thing, to the, the other thing, and then the other thing back to the first thing. That doesn't make sense. We take the coins that belong to this person, and we're sending them back to that address. But this needs to be confirmed by the same private key as this address if we want to keep things simple. The other thing is I want any account to be able to view how many coins someone has staked just based off of their public address. And the network needs to be able to reward the staking address without directly rewarding the public address. That's why we need the staking address instead of just locking the coins away from the public address and then just rewarding the public address. So the idea I came up with is that we have our public address and our staking address. So our public address here, and then the staking address just adds stake underscore in front of it. If I understand the hash method correctly, I don't think it's possible for an underscore to show up inside a hash function. So now when we try and convert, confirm the staking address by using the same private key, we just check if it has stake in front of it. And if it does, we remember it does. And then we just confirm the staking address using the private key and then just label the transaction as being sent back to the public address from a staking address. And I think that solves it. Now I just need to code it, which is a lot easier said than done.